You are watching Sammy the Interviewing Toucan, made possible by the Indiana Young Reader Center. Hey everybody, it's Sammy here and I'm here today. I can't believe it. I'm here today with Alelia Bundles. Hi Alelia, how are you? Hello, Sammy. Gosh, how are you? I'm great. You look wonderful. And as always, it's just so delightful to talk to you. So all of our authors are answering this question. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your connection to Indiana, because I know your connection is, is deep. So I grew up in Indianapolis. I was born in Chicago, but by the time I was three years old, my parents, who both were from Indianapolis, had decided to move back home. So we moved back. We lived on Rookwood for about a year or so, and then we moved to 6222 Grandview Drive, and I grew up in that house. We built the house in 1958. Oh, that's so great. Now, tell us a little bit more about your connection to Indiana. Tell us about your family. I know this is stuff that you talk about all the time, but we want sure. to hear all about it. Sure. So I, um, my family is Madam C.J. Walker. My mother was Madam Walker's great-granddaughter. I'm Madam Walker's great-great-granddaughter. And when I was growing up, Madam Walker, my mother worked at the Madam C.J. Walker Manufacturing Company as a vice president. So I began to know about Madam Walker and her daughter, Alelia Walker, who I'm named after, even when I was a little girl, but not really in all of the details. You know, we had things like the silverware that we used every day had Madam Walker's monogram, CJW, on it. And the baby grand piano that was in our living room had belonged to Alelia Walker during the Harlem Renaissance when she lived in New York. So these were stories I was starting to hear a little bit, but my real passion was writing. And my parents really wanted me to follow my own dreams. So in junior high school at West Lane, I worked for the school newspaper. And then at North Central, uh, I was the editor again of the North Central Northern Light. So that's really where my writing got a real launch. Isn't that great that those experiences that folks have in um, high school and even middle school, they can have such an influence over the whole rest of their lives? Oh, you know, I feel so fortunate. And uh, the way that I found my way to the newspaper is going to surprise people. When I was in seventh grade, the first day of school, my science teacher, Mr. Van Sickle, uh, asked us to fill out a five by eight card with our phone number, our parents' name, and our hobbies. And I wrote writing as my hobby. And at the end of class, he said to me, if you like to write, you should try out for the newspaper. And I'm really fortunate that we had a, a newspaper advisor, Mr. James Gasho. And he was a real kind of, you know, exacting guy. He was real demanding, but one of those guys kind of crusty on the outside and a, heart, a soft heart on the inside. But he had really high standards in our junior high school won, um, newspaper won national awards that high school kids were reading. So I got a really, really great foundation. Oh, I just love that. So tell us a little bit about what you're working on now. I have your book here, all about Madam C.J. Walker, which was written for youth, but I know you write lots of things for grownups too. So where are you in your creative journey right now, and where are you hoping to be someday? Well, you know, I'm, I so love this book all about Madam C.J. Walker. I love that the publisher, Cardinal, is based in Indianapolis. That's and right. the artist who did the cover artwork is from Bloomington. So it's a real Indiana uh, source of pride for me. Aww. And it is my fourth book. My very first book was another young adult book called Madam C.J. Walker Entrepreneur that was part of Chelsea House Press. And then I wrote On Her Own Ground, The Life and Times of Madam C.J. Walker, a real major comprehensive biography that was the inspiration for a Netflix series starring Octavia Spencer that was just on earlier this year. And then I wrote another book called Madam Walker Theater Center. It's a book of 200 photographs that really gives the history of the Madam Walker Legacy Center that's in downtown Indianapolis. And then I wrote On Her Own Ground. I mean, then I wrote uh, all about Madam C.J. Walker. So now I'm working on the first major biography of Madam Walker's daughter, Alelia Walker, 
who was a patron of the arts and a very central figure of the Harlem Renaissance. So I have 25 chapters written and I, am, I have about eight more chapters to go. And I'll tell you one of the things that, one of the things that really uh, was part of the inspiration for me wanting to write is my fascination with African-American authors. And because my great-grandmother, Alelia Walker, had known a lot of the famous artists and writers and musicians of the Harlem Renaissance, I have some of her books. Oh, so this one tell is- Tell us all about it. This is, so this is a book called The Weary Blues by Langston Hughes. Oh my goodness. A really famous poet. And then this one is called Cain by Jean Toomer. And these books were in my grandfather's apartment when I was growing up. And then I inherited the books. And I'll tell you, one of the things that's really extremely special to me <gasps> is that <gasps> this is autographed to Alelia Walker by Langston Hughes. Oh my goodness. Autograph says, for Alelia Walker, a queen from some time dead Egyptian night walks once again, sincerely <sighs> Langston Hughes. And that is a, a line from one of the poems in the book. So I feel that this really amazing connection to the Harlem Renaissance and to the writers who continue to inspire me. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. What treasures you have there. That's so wonderful. Thanks so much for sharing those. So now, Sammy, I know that you have, you know, that you love writing, you love books, but it's, it's so special when you can find a personal connection to a writer or to a story or something that just really, you know, makes your heart leap. And I think when I was, when I was eight years old, it's really kind of when I realized that I love to write. I wrote a little short story about going to the moon. Oh. And this was before anybody had gone to the moon. It was long before 1969. And one of my mother's friends, who was a school teacher, read the story and she thought it was really good. And she sent it to a children's magazine. So then I identified as a writer and, and I joke and I say, you know, I cannot carry a tune. So it was clear I was not going to be a singer. But I knew that writing excited me and I realized that I could create an emotion or create a scene and it might have an effect on somebody else. Well, I just think that's so important. And, you know, I also I also am always encouraging children's librarians around the country to really highlight authors of color. You know, there's this whole thing right now about own voices. We want to we want to have literature by the people that is being represented in the literature. And we want all people represented in the literature, right? Oh, absolutely. You know, it really does mean a lot to young people when they can see themselves in books. And I know, I used to spend the summers in Pine Bluff, Arkansas with my great aunt. My mother lived between Pine Bluff and Indianapolis. Her parents were divorced when she was growing up. And she wanted me to experience this small town in Arkansas. And, you know, at that point, the libraries were segregated. And I Ugh. went to the Black Library. And the librarian gave me a book to read called Black April. And I was maybe eight years old, and it was really the first time I'd ever read a book with a Black character who was a central figure. So that made a huge difference for me. And that, so now, I, you know, when I see all of these wonderful new picture books and biographies that have children of color, I buy those books. I don't have kids of my own, but I just buy them because I love having them. And I think it enriches us all when we learn a little bit about other people. You know, when I was in... Um, elementary school when I was at Grandview, I, then the summertime, I guess this still happens, but then you could go to the library and, you know, check out books and you would fill out a little chart if you read a biography or you read science. And I was always like reading more books than I could, could count. And, but the, in the biography section, I always loved biography. And so it's kind of ironic that I write biography now, Ew. but in our biography section, there were no books with black women. There was one book of, with um, Carver, who was a black scientist. There were only a few books with women. I think Susan Blackwell and Louisa May Alcott and maybe a couple of others. But, you know, I was just as excited reading about Newt Rockney, who mm -hmm. was the coach at Notre Dame. That's right. I loved reading about other people's lives. And I think all kids can just be inspired by people who are across the spectrum. 
Absolutely. Now, you know, we're talking in a really historic time. Seems like it's always a historic time, but it's 2020. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Um, there's been a lot of civil unrest lately uh, about Black Lives Matter. How are you coping with all of those things that are happening right now? You know, it is really a challenging and a kind of weird and also inspiring time. Yeah. You know, we're in the midst of this pandemic, which is just, you know, there's so much loss and people are friends who are sick and I've lost a few friends. And I'm so, so I'm sorry. feeling that, you know, you know, it's a, it's a tough time for a lot of people. And so I'm just trying to be healthy and trying to wear my mask. And wear my gloves. My gym opened last week, so I go to the gym, but I'm spraying everything, and you have to take your temperature when you walk in the door. And I don't mind that, but I want to be, you know, I want to be out. But I really haven't been very many places, and I don't know when I'll get on a plane again. But it is a, it's a really kind of challenging time. And at the same time, it's really exciting and inspiring that so many of the conversations that I've been having for most of my life about race and about inequality and about um, people needing to understand the system and the history of America and all of its dimensions that those conversations are now out in the open. And I think that there are a lot more people right now who are receptive to hearing what life is like for other people. And it's being done when it's being done in a peaceful way but in an understanding way. So I think we may grow from this period of time, but I think it's still gonna be pretty difficult. I agree. I just think, yeah, time, but growth. I'm just trying to think of words. Those are yeah, all good growth ones. Is, growth <laughs> is difficult, growth is painful. And a lot of people don't wanna change. Yeah. It's really threatening to people when you say, you say to them that the thing that you've believed all of your life and that the people closest to you believe you know, may not be entirely true, or it, that kind of um, belief may actually be hurting other people. And so right. it's very hard to have those conversations. I was talking to an author the other day, and we talked about this idea of having a growth mindset, mm. you know, keeping your brain flexible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think, I think that's important just in, sort of as an exercise, just keep your mind open to all the other thoughts out there, you know? Keep your mind open. And, you know, and for me, because, you know, now I'm kind of an old person, even though I don't feel old. You don't look it. <laughs> but I, but I now, um, you know, my, I, I have friends who have grandchildren and I have a, a godchildren who are in their 30s. So they're not really that young, but they're younger and they're starting to have kids. And I really learned so much from them. I really enjoy having friends of all ages because I know that they, they, we have some of the same values, of course, but they see the world in a different way because they've had different experiences. So it's important to me to keep my mind open to hear the things that they're thinking about and the challenges that they're facing. Absolutely. Well, Alelia, we're getting to the end here. I'm inviting all my authors to share a little something. Do you have something there for show and tell that you want to share with us? So, you know, I haven't done show and tell in many years, but you inspired me. <gasps> so I went down and I looked in my treasures, my Madam Walker treasures, and I have <gasps> two dolls, oh two Madam Walker dolls. I just love these. And I will say when I, yeah, there you go. We're, we're, what? <laughs> when I was when I was a little girl, I um I wasn't a big doll player. I never had a Barbie. That just kind of wasn't my thing. Yeah. But now as an adult, I collect dolls. And so these are two of my, you know, very, very favorite ones. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that. Well, Alelia, this has been so wonderful. You are a treasure. Um, I just really appreciate the time. It's so great. Sammy, this is great. I just, you know, thank you very much for having me. I'm so oh glad to be part of your team. Yay. Well, you you heard it there. So this is your favorite Hoosier Toucan encouraging you to read local. So long, everybody. Bye-bye.